Greetings class. Right now I want to talk about one of the types of intellectual property and that type is patent, is a patent. Patent law protects inventions. So it protects things that uh, people put together or uh, discover as long as they're not actually uh, scientific principles that already exist. However, if they combine things, um, create something that's new, a new invention, then that's what uh, would entitle the creator to get patent law protection. So specifically, patent law covers these things. Any process, a machine, a method of manufacturing, a composition of matter, or new or useful improvements of those things. Uh, matter there is spelled wrong. I don't know how many of you noticed that right away. I didn't notice it until I started recording. So what kinds of things are we talking about? For example, um, a composition of matter might be a new hybrid type of animal. Now if it's an animal that's found in nature, let's say it's a cat, or it's a mouse, that you can't patent, not the naturally existing creature. But let's say that you create a mouse that is, has cat fur. So you somehow combine the genetics of each so that you end up with a mouse with cat fur that say meows. That hybrid animal can be patented. It's a composition of matter, but it's not a natural composition of matter. It's a composition of matter that you've created. So that would be patentable. Um, another example, let's say that you're a farmer and you create a grape by combining, let's say, an apricot and a grape so that you get a grapricot. <laughs> Okay, so maybe that's not that funny. Um, but you create a grape that is larger, significantly larger than the typical grape, and let's say it's more solid inside because it has features of an apricot. That's a composition of matter, and that would be patentable. So no one else could take what you've done and uh, patent it. Patent law also includes processes. And um, if you create a process to extract DNA in a way that others have not, then that would be, that process would be patentable. So those are examples of things that uh, you can patent. You couldn't, however, patent um, a law of nature um, and you couldn't patent something that is um, not a new creation of uh, something that currently exists. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. So, the first question that you have in this section is, patent law protects animals modified in a lab true or false? And I'll give you about 10 seconds to answer that. I've talked about that already, so hopefully you have the answer to that. Okay, so the answer is true. Patent law does protect animals modified in a lab, something that you've created, a hybrid animal that you've created. So, what are the key elements in a uh, patent when you patent someone? It has to be novel. So, again, it can't be something that someone's already been using, and then you decide, aha, I'm going to patent that. Uh, that won't work. It has to be something that's useful. So, that would distinguish it from something that's purely artistic. If it's something that's purely artistic, it's protected under another area of intellectual property, specifically copyright. And it has to be non-obvious. 
So for example, if you decide I want to make a chair that is different than other chairs, that probably would not be patentable. But a chair has to have certain characteristics, right? It has to be somewhere for the posterior to be placed. It may or may not have arms um, somewhere for maybe the legs to go, whether they're dangling, whether they're um, you know straight, whether they're angled. But uh, so if you design a chair that is useful, right? And maybe it's a new design, but it has to be something that's so not so obvious. And a chair, it would be difficult to create a chair that would be patentable. Now maybe some component of the chair, let's say that you create a chair that you can lift without having to, um, you know, lift your body yourself, the chair lifts you. The machinery that does that would be patentable. But the chair itself would not be. Now, patents exist for a certain period of time. A utility patent, which is what most people get, is worth, um, lasts for 20 years. Design patent, 14 years. What the patent does during that period of time, it creates a monopoly for the owner of the patent, and no one else can use it. And note that computer programs are patentable. So even though you have several programs that do word processing, um, because the idea of word processing is not a unique idea, but the pro programs look different. The word processing programs look different, and then behind the scenes, how they operate is different. And so that's what can be patented. We often see the issue of patents arise with medical um, issues, specifically prescription drugs, and that's why the pictures that I have on patent law have um, like beakers is what it's um, designed to look like. So um, you take different chemicals and you combine them together, you create a pill, you create liquid that's medicine that is designed to cure a disease or treat a disease or treat an illness. Um, when um, prescription drug manufacturers create a drug and uh, it's something new that works, then they get a utility patent for 20 years. During that time, they have a monopoly then and they're the only ones that can sell it. So you'll see that the drug manufacturers advertise very heavily because they want people to use that drug during the time they have that monopoly. When that 20 years ends, then anyone can make that same drug. And that's where generic drug manufacturers come in. They are often, if it's a drug that's very popular, generic drug manufacturers are ready, waiting for that 20 years to expire. Immediately upon the expiration of that 20 years, they make their drug, the generic version of the drug. Now, in order to get a patent, you need to file it with the Patent and Trademark Office so the patent is public. And if you get time, it's useful to even look at the Patent Office uh, website. It's uh, the Patent and Trademark Office. Just search it on Google and you can find it. And that's where all those patents are posted. So people can see them, but they just can't use the patent until the expiration of the monopoly. So the next question, a patent creates a 20-year monopoly for the patent holder, true or false? And I will give you um, 10 seconds to answer that question. Okay, the answer there is true. The patent creates a 20-year monopoly for the patent holder, at least in the case of utility patents. So what is an infringement of a patent? An infringement then is someone uses it without the permission of the patent holder, whether it's direct or indirect, um, and whoever that is, the infringing party, sells or makes or uses that patent without that permission. Uh, that gives rise to remedies for the patent holder. 
The remedies could be an injunction, which is a court order to stop someone from using it. It could be the right to damages, which um, means that the patent holder lost profits, uh, all the profits of the infringer, and even attorney's fees are remedies that are available. Um, patents are protected internationally. Uh, what I've done is to list on this slide various uh, international treaties and agreements between countries. When you create a patent in the U.S., that patent is good with many other countries, not all, but many of the other major countries throughout the world. Uh, they have either signed the Paris Convention, the Patent Cooperation Treaty, or through GATT and NAFTA have agreed that they will honor the patent that is granted in the United States, or vice versa. That if someone has created a patent in Mexico then that, and registered it, then that registration is valid in the U.S. So, a question. Patent law protects all of the following except A, a hybrid animal created in a lab, B, a hybrid plant created in a lab, C, discovery of a scientific principle, D, business processes, E, both A and B. I'll give you 10 seconds to answer this one. Okay, hopefully you did get the correct answer. Discovery of a scientific principle. That is not patentable. That's something that already exists. An example would be like the law of gravity. Um, you may discover the law of gravity, but you can't patent it because it's a naturally occurring scientific principle. So thanks for listening, and I'll see you online.